Now we're going to talk about cane pruning, and this is a well pruned cane pruned vine. And this variety is Suffolk Red, which is normally cane pruned. So what you see here are one year old canes that have been wrapped around this one of two central wires. And you see wires out here on the outside, so there's four wires across the top. Uh, there's different ways to do a cane pruned trellis system, but this is how we do it. We wrap the cane around the inside wires, and then the outside wires act to sort of catch the shoots as they grow out and down. <clears throat> and so they end up growing out rather than kind of straight down or, or possibly breaking. In addition to leaving the canes, we're going to show leaving some spurs. And the reason we leave spurs is to create next year's canes. Sometimes you'll get next year's canes that will grow out of the trunk, but we want to ensure that we get them by leaving some spurs. So this vine needs to be pruned, and here is last year's cane that we left. And notice the wood is cracking. That's how you can tell it looks older than this one-year-old cane. There's a distinct difference between these two. And this is what we'll prune off. We remove the two-year-old wood and get back to where we're leaving one-year-old canes. So we'll start there. But we don't want to just remove it all the way back because we might find that there's a cane coming off of it that we want to use either for a cane or for a spur to create a replacement cane. So kind of the first thing you need to do is decide which cane you're going to leave, which two canes you'll leave on each side because we're leaving two on each side of the vine. So we want to choose a cane that grew last year not down here below all the foliage because that'll be, it was shaded and we want to have sunlit canes from last year because they'll be more productive. They produce more fruit. So we're going to find something up here like this. Here's a good example of something that we could leave as a cane, although it's coming from the wrong side. We would leave it on this side if we have a choice. So we're looking for something over here like maybe this one. This one's a little too thin and not, not long enough. And so maybe this one right here. This one grew um, fairly on the, on the top. And this is actually a pretty nice cane right here. So the best thing to do is probably to mark it, put a flag on it so you don't cut it off accidentally. And it comes from the middle. We want canes in the head trained system. And this is, head, this is called a head because all the canes are coming from one spot and they call it a head as opposed to a cordon. <clears throat> so we're choosing a cane that comes as close down low on the head and in the center as possible. If you choose a cane way out here and you have to cut it off halfway to the next vine, you're not going to have much fruit. So here's one of our canes and we'll choose another one. And they're not always easy to find. But here's one right here that would probably work just fine. So there's our two canes that we're leaving. So we know that we don't want the majority of this two-year-old last year's cane, we're going to cut it off. At least back to, we'll go at least to right here. And now we can take off the, the tie tape and we cut it. And here's where it ended last year. And there's the next vine right there. And now it looks much simpler. It was kind of a tangled mess. But now we've removed last year's cane, two-year-old cane, and we're now going to select, again, it was these two right here that we're choosing. We could decide to choose other ones later, like this one doesn't look half bad. We could use it or we could make a cane, a spur out of it. Let's remove the other one, which was right here from last year, and we'll cut back at least to here. So we decided we were going to use this cane right here and we'll cut it to where it meets the adjacent vine. And we'll wrap it around the wire and then we'll tie it. There's one and then we decided the other one was right here. And we'll wrap it on the other. But look at this one. That looks like a pretty nice cane, even better cane. So we'll choose that one and we'll cut it halfway. And there's the other cane. So we have our two canes that we're leaving for next year. So 
So now we want to choose our canes for the other side of the vine. And again, we want a sunlit cane. So here was one that grew up on the top. We can choose it to go over across. And then one for this wire, we might want to use this cane here, which looks like a nice, thick, hefty cane. You don't want to use little wimpy canes like this, but you also want to try to avoid huge canes. They're not as fruitful either. Medium-sized canes like this one right here are about ideal. And then, of course, you cut all these side lateral canes off too. Okay, well, there's not a bad one, but it doesn't go quite long enough. Actually, that's a pretty nice cane right there. Even if it comes from the other side, that's okay. So a lot of times at the end of a cane, you'll get dieback and um, discoloration. And this discoloration is probably powdery mildew. And you don't want to leave that there. Um, we tend to not control our powdery mildew at the end of the season, so it comes back. And so this is what, um, it, kills, it kills the cane. So you want to cut back to good wood. And once you do that, maybe your cane's not long enough to use. So we'll choose a different cane instead of that one. And this one right here doesn't look too bad either. We have our two canes now on this side, one and two. And now everything else can go or be left as a spur. So what we want to do is bring everything kind of back toward the head, toward the center of the vine. So everything beyond that cane that we're leaving, I'm just going to cut that off. And that's a big part of the vine gone. That simplifies it really nicely. And here's last year's cane on this side. This is a two-year-old cane now. So we're going to get rid of that back to, not too far, here's our cane coming off of last year's cane that was left. So I'm going to cut back to that and remove the old cane. It's looking better. So let's wrap this cane around and cut it to the midway point. And then we'll cut everything else back to spurs. There we almost have it. Now we're down to a bunch of spurs and then our four canes that we left. So we have way too many spurs, that'll produce way too many shoots. Now what we want to do is thin these out and to bring them as close to the center, right below the wires as possible. So we have two sitting right here, one's going out. I'm going to save that one in case we, because that'll produce a nice cane that'll grow up and we could use it hopefully next year. <clears throat> and then we have one that's coming a little too high away from the center. I'm going to cut that off. This one's a little too thick and this one produced a huge cane. So I'm going to cut that off. So we have one, two, three, four, five. This one's coming from down here. Now we have four. And if you think that each of these two bud spurs is going to produce two canes, now we'd have eight canes coming from here. Uh, you could go with that. I would say um, go with less. Some people say go with more. Um, but I'm going to cut this one off down here. And so now we have our three spurs, one back here that you can't see, one here and one here. And they'll produce next year's canes, hopefully, <coughs> that we can select from. And so we have our four canes, and we're finished with this vine, except for tying the ends of the canes. Because even though you wrap it, the wind will, you know, once it starts growing, the wind will cause it to come unwrapped, much of the time. <coughs>